the other couples were gonna do snorkeling. Not this bitch. Not this hair. I was like, oh no, ma'am. <laughs> going on everybody welcome back to another episode of up all night i'm your host bobby knight and we're reviewing for the love of dilfs season two episode nine it's almost over we only got one more episode to go after this and we find out who's going to win and take home all the money and um oh yeah love too this is what it's really all about is love <laughs> uh to recap real quick from the last episode uh hazel and kane were eliminated um no surprise there there really was no connection. There was no spark there for them. Friends, sure, maybe. I don't know if they've even spoken since the show. We'll have to wait and find out. Maybe I can get them on the pod. But it um, was like painfully, <laughs> painfully clear that there was no, uh, no sexual chemistry going on for them. And Hazel just kept saying that he made friends along the way and he found friend love. <laughs> God, I'm gonna miss his. It was just so. It was just so fun to have on the show because he was just like quirky and whatever um kane i love too but they're gone now so get over it <laughs> so let's jump right into this new episode uh episode nine but before we do that you know what has to happen we have to play my favorite song All right, so the new episode opens up and they're all kind of just hanging out in their room talking about the elimination as as you do the next day. And Keith is very happy and um, really happy. And actually, let me let me have Keith explain to you just how happy he is. I'm really happy to be in the top three with this group, for real. The top three couples that are here deserve to be here, and this is what really it was meant to be. So I'm just really happy. The vibes are right. Everybody is really happy and grateful to just be here. So I'm happy. We all does. So in case you didn't hear, he was he's happy. <laughs> Should play made a drinking game. Drink every time he says happy. He would already be drunk, and that's only the beginning of the episode. Uh, so anyways, uh, the top three are all just chatting about how grateful they are to be in top three and how they all feel like they deserve it. And this is the top three that they always saw happening. And uh, then they hear a bunch of like people chatting outside of the room and they go outside to see what it is. And all of the daddies have returned to the mansion. And I was wondering if they were gonna do one of those last minute things. Like, I, cause I know there's only 10 episodes and this is nine. I was like, are they gonna give like, the daddies a chance to fight back into the competition and like re remove one daddy and switch themselves or something which i was like there's no way that would work because then they wouldn't have a connection right so i was like uh wondering what, exactly what they were doing back and then we find out that the daddies get to ask all of the contestants questions like you know typical things they do on on reality shows why do you deserve to be here what makes you better than that person why do you think you deserve this and um, I really wanted more drama out of this. I wanted more, uh, I don't know, shadiness. So you get all the daddies lined up in front of the pool table with Stormy and they all get their chance to get on the line and each answer, um, each ask a question for them to answer and why they should win. And what ends up happening is the daddies are all going to deliberate and they're going to decide one couple that's going to automatically advance to the final two. So they all have to vote and the majority of um, the majority rules as to who will be the first couple that will automatically get advanced to the final three. Stormy's looking great, of course, and she gives a really funny one liner right here, which literally made me laugh out loud. Let's hear what she says. Good morning. Good morning, morning Stormy. Stormy. How'd everybody sleep? Good. Very uh, okay. I'm here to fuck that up. Uh. <laughs> I'm here to fuck that up. Typical Stormy. Um, so, th the way that this happens is they go down the line asking these questions and all of the remaining couples, the top three, they do that thing where it's like, I don't want to say anything bad about the other person. It's all very like pageanty answers and that can backfire on you in shows like this because 
if, if I was eliminated and I came and I asked you a question and then you're like, I don't want to answer that. I think we all deserve it. You're not getting my vote anymore. I want to hear you. I want to hear you tell me exactly why you should be here and why they shouldn't, if that's the question that I asked. But they all seem to give just really pageanty, polite answers because they don't want to be mean to each other. But I mean, this is the end here. You're, you, the one wrong thing and you might not you get the win, you might not get the money. Rico, of course, looks thrilled um, to be here. <laughs> I don't know if he's just over it, or if he's just, that's just who he is, or if he just doesn't want to see all the eliminated couples, but he looks just bothered. He looks like he's waiting for them to be like, all right, scene's done, so we can just go, like, do something in a different room. He just, he, he does not look pleased with what's going on today. And I had a feeling that I would be able to count on Barry to bring a little bit of shade, a little bit of drama. Uh, here's what he said when it came his time to ask a question. Congratulations, guys. Super Very excited for you guys. Thank you. I don't see some of these relationships working outside of Dilf Mansion. So explain to me how these relationships will be lasting once you guys leave Dilf Mansion. I'm a very straightforward guy. Um, I like that he asked that question. I like that he was like, how do you see these relationships working? They all kind of gave the same answer. I'm really straightforward. I'm going to work my hardest to do this, blah, blah, blah. Um, Rico and Nigel, or as I've been calling them, Nico, their couple name. Um, they they, um, they were like, oh, we already booked a ticket. Uh, Rico said he had already booked a ticket to go to New Jersey. But, I mean, I was on the show. And in all honesty, I, I thought the same thing with with Nate who was like 15 years younger than me and lived on a different coast I was like uh yeah no totally I will move but to, to be fair when I was on my season I was looking to move out of Boston anyways which I ended I mean I'm in Chicago now um I was gonna move anywhere literally like I, I was like do I move back to Florida do I go to Providence like I just Boston was just just so over for like the nightlife scene and what I do so I was, I was open to moving anywhere. And one of the top places I wanted to move was to Silver Lake, LA, um, originally. And that's why I was like, oh, I think I might be moving back out there anyways. And I used to live in San Diego. So I was like, maybe, but I mean, I wouldn't have moved. I wouldn't have moved just for him if I had no intention of moving, if I had like a job and a life and shit going on, um, to pick up and move is wild. That's why I wonder in a lot of these shows too, like the, um, like the bachelor and stuff like that isn't that what all ends up happening they don't end up staying together i keep bringing up the bachelor on this show a lot and i've never watched it i should go watch at least like one season of the bachelor right um but yeah so he's just saying he doesn't think anything we're gonna, any of them will be together after the show is over and you know i kind of agree uh they all each of those couples lives pretty far apart from each other so I mean, will they stay in touch? Sure. Are they going to go to the premiere and, and finale parties and, and Kiki? Yeah. But is anyone going to move? I would be, I'd be shocked if somebody up and moved. So after they're done asking all their questions, the daddies are all going to deliberate and each cast a vote for who they want to send to the finals. Uh, they get to pick one couple to send to the finals. Then the, I'm assuming uh, that the other two couples will have to fight it out for the himbos vote later on in the episode is what's going to happen. And then whoever's left um, third will go home is what I'm assuming. And if I'm right, um, a million dollars, please, from each of you. But yeah, so while the daddies are deliberating and casting their vote privately, each of them, the top three couples get to go um, on like a party boat ride type thing, which I thought was really cool. They got so many cooler things to do. Like, look, I was in the top three and we didn't, even, we didn't get a pop. Well, technically top two because there wasn't a top three on my season, but um I, they didn't take us on a boat. I want to go on a boat. Listen, now I've been shafted. <laughs> well, I've been shafted. Uh, I didn't get a helicopter or a boat. Jesus. I'm definitely, now, you know what? Now I'm going to do season four just for helicopters and boats. Watch, I go back and they don't have a budget for anything anymore. <laughs> uh, so they're on a boat, um, a party boat. And of course, everyone's thrilled to be there except for Jimmy. And Jimmy says this. <laughs> When I heard boat, I admit I was terrified. 
I was covered under about six inches of SPF 70 when we went out there, which I think was a very smart move. The boat was really nice. It was a, I believe it was a pontoon boat. It was flat and uh, had a nice covering on it. Wow, Jimmy, riveting. No, really, I want to hear more about the pontoon boat instead of watching Himbo's twerk. Please continue. It was really nice. It really was very nice. So, uh, as you can see, there's the boat right there. Um, actually, I think that looks like footage of another boat. Anyways, there's a boat right there. And, yeah, Jimmy was thrilled to be there. And he got to uh, wear all of his sunscreen. I like that they're really leaning into Jimmy being the whitest guy ever invented <laughs> in the past couple episodes. Um, also, look, don't mind for y'all watching the video... My barber hasn't been around. I haven't gotten my, my beard lined up correctly in a couple of weeks. I'm going on Monday. It'll be better next episode. Um, also, I just want to say, this episode, as as it gets with reality shows towards the end, it's a lot of filler, the last, like, epi the, like episodes like this. So, this will probably be, like, a shorter podcast. Usually, I try to do an hour. This might be a little bit shorter. But um, this episode, I think, not to sidetrack... This episode, this season, I think could have been... If it was eight episodes instead of ten, because, like, the first one was eight. I think with eight episodes, it might have been a little more... I don't know. I think it could have I think it could have served well from less episodes instead of more episodes. So, because I hate, I hate, like, the fillery feeling in an episode, you know? I'm like, get to it. Get to it. And once again, to touch on uh, Jimmy being the whitest man ever created... Uh, him and Keith were kind of talking on the boat and just kind of chatting about how their families would react to them. And here's what he was saying. How the families are going to react, how they would react if this, like, you said you've never dated a white guy before. And he decided to start with the whitest man ever invented. I know, which is true. I'm <laughs> the whitest man ever invented. <laughs> um, yeah, but they're like, uh, I think they're a really cute couple. It's unexpected. I'm, I'm, Kind of mad that we didn't get a lot of uh, a lot of Jimmy's zingers and one-liners a little bit later in the season. Uh, I remember the first couple episodes, I was like, is he on the show? Like, they didn't really show them much. And they clearly have a very strong connection, and they're both really funny. So I wish that we got some more um, of them sooner in the season. Rico and Nigel are talking on their little part of the boat, and I figured out what it is. Now I know. And <laughs> Nigel's gonna be like, please, why are you dragging me? Um, it's almost as if it's the way that they talk is it's like they're re they're trying to reassure each other a lot and reassure other people instead of just going with the flow of it. So it comes off like, do you know how when Trump's always like, I hate to bring up Trump on a stormy show. It's always like, this is the best, the biggest. It's huge. No one's ever done it like me. It's kind of like that. It's like you don't gotta tell me. You can just do it, and I'll see. But they're um, sitting, chatting over on the side uh, of the boat, and here's what they had to say. The problem, like, just because uh, we're a roller coaster, bitch. Yeah. A, a relationship's supposed to be a roller coaster. It's, it's, I'm so tired of hearing that we're the problem because it's elevated one minute and low the next. That's what makes us who we are. Everyone's always trying to attack my my osito with his emotions and shit, and I'm like so tired of everyone like using that as like an excuse for us to not be together. Because like. Bitch, you think I don't see, like, that he's in touch with his emotions? Don't you think I would have left by now or, like, look for someone else that is less emotional? Like, <sighs> So, obviously, he's saying, like, yeah, I, I, I see what, what you're seeing, but it doesn't bother me. And if it doesn't bother him, then fine. Good luck. All the power to you. But I do not think a relationship should be a roller coaster. And I'm speaking from having been on several fucking relationship roller coasters. It never turns out right. It never does. And the thing about being on the show like this too is once you're not there, you don't have the energy of the show and all that shit, it, little little cracks that you think are okay because you're on TV and you're moving quick. This has all happened for them in 10 days, right? Or I think they got a couple extra days when they were filming. I don't know. But it's all happening really quick. So you're getting pushed. There's no time to really linger on something unless you want to. Like if we get an argument... There's another scene we got to film. We got to move on to something else. There's a challenge. It, we're filming. We're taking a break. Like it kind of pushes you through it. So if you're in a roller coaster 
already of emotions being on the show, and then your relationship is a roller coaster. Uh, that's too many roller, too many loop de loops, I think. But I mean, they'll figure it out, uh, right? <laughs> they'll figure it out when they when you get off the show if it's really going to work. Because that's, I think, what it really is. Once there's nobody around to kind of like, almost, it's like almost like having training wheels on your relationship when you're on a show like this because people are put like. They don't, they're not going to let you linger on anything too much. They're going to make you squash it or move on or do the next thing. But once you're alone and something goes wrong, you're just sitting in it. And hopefully that doesn't happen for them or any couples, really, because I know what that feels like, and it's super shitty. We had over to see what Anthony and Derek are talking about, and they're talking about family and um, Derek saying how he would be... He's actually kind of nervous to meet Anthony's daughter, and I, I totally get that because... I think that it, it's not good to just introduce any and everybody that you meet in your life to your, to your kids, especially if they're not going to stick around. You don't want, like, what's the purpose of, of even doing that, you know? You should be serious with somebody and, and have something really established before you do that. I think that he, I think he said his daughter was older, not older, but like 16, 18. So she's also, I mean, is aware of the world around her and is going to watch the show and stuff. So it's a little bit different when they're, when they're, you know, older, late teens, whatever. Um, but still, it's like, why I'm not going to bring you around and be like, this is my new boyfriend. And then two minutes later, you have a different boyfriend or you're with nobody at all because it's like, Ugh, don't do that. That's kind of kind of gives you the ick. But they're both saying how they're both very family oriented and stuff. And I thought it was really cute to see them have this talk. Let's take a listen to what they had to say. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I love that we both are family men. And I'm not going to even lie. I am a little shy to meet your daughter. As long as you continue to be yourself. Yes, I'm going to be true to myself. Yeah. I'm always going to be me. Obviously, I'm worried to see, like, how would she perceive me? Because I know I'm a little goofy and I can be a bit much, but I'm being true to myself. And I hope she appreciates it. And I hope he sees that I am being my authentic self. I love Derek so much. So cute. So cute. Um, I like that he knows that he's goofy and silly and he's like, yeah, I, I know. I'm, a, I'm aware of who I am and I'm nervous to meet her and hopefully she likes me the way that Anthony does. Well, not the same way, though, weird, but you know, just likes him. So then we get to, uh, they're still out in the boat and this deal or no deal case comes, <laughs> comes out of nowhere in the corner and it is uh, the results of who the daddies voted for to advance to the top two. So um, whichever couple this is, they're in the finale next week. They're uh, in the top two. They're safe for the day. And let's take a look and see who it was. Very cute. Every time things get super fun and super cute, he sends a little something to shake things up. And we're sick of it. So I knew in this little case right here was nothing but trouble. Oh my god. Fuck, 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 fuck. This is also the best part that Nigel can't get the envelope open and then you hear Jimmy go, don't let it blow away because they're out in this like windy ass boat. So he's like having trouble opening the envelope. And I was like, imagine the envelope just flies into the ocean. That would have been hilarious. Yeah. Oh, like, open it. <laughs> it's really, really nerve wracking because this is about to say who is safe and who's automatically going to the top two. Don't let it blow away. She sealed like this. Don't rip it like this. Congratulations to Anthony and Derek! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> what? I said Anthony! <laughs> I was happy. I was ecstatic. I was like, no way. Oh, fuck! <laughs> So, uh, Anthony and Derek get to advance to the final two straight away. And I want to touch back in the beginning when I was saying we should all take a shot every time someone says happy. Because a lot of people keep saying happy over and over on this episode. So maybe maybe I'll edit a clip for the beginning. Do like one of those little Andy Cohen, watch it happens live, drinking word. <laughs> but yeah, so Derek and Anthony get to adv advance to the final, which means the majority of the daddies after the questioning, thought that they were the strongest couple. Um, I I think that they should be in the finals. I think that the my top two for the finals would have been Jimmy, Jimmy and Keith, Anthony and Derek, but we'll have to see who else advances. But 
Yeah, so they get to hang out in the boat a little bit longer. Uh, they're going to do some snorkeling, which I want to do some snorkeling. <laughs> the whole rest of this is going to be me saying, I want to do that. Add snorkeling to helicopter rides and party boats for me. So almost everyone was going to go snorkeling. Derek was not about to get his hair wet. And <laughs> it, as usual, everything he says cracks me up. And here's what he uh, <laughs> here's what he had to say when everyone was going snorkeling. The other couples were going to do snorkeling. Not this bitch. Not this hair. I was like, oh no, ma'am. <laughs> oh no, ma'am. Um... What else I thought was really crazy here when they were all snorkeling is um, <laughs> right here, as you can see, if you're watching it, Rico's petting a jellyfish. Don't, they sting and it hurts. Don't do that. When I saw that, when I saw like the jellyfish and a hand going towards it, I instinctually, I was like, don't, ah, um, I used to go swimming when I was a kid in, in Charleston where I grew up. And there was always all these jellyfish. And I remember people getting stung and like losing their mind. So I was always like so afraid of jellyfish stings. And right as I was thinking that, uh, here's, here's what he said. <laughs> I pet some jellyfish. I got stung by two or three jellyfish, but they were cute jellyfish. I was, I was like, come on, don't get stung by jellyfish. That hurts like a mother. Uh-uh. I would, that's what I, that's what I'd be nervous about actually with snorkeling is like things touching me that I didn't want to touch me. But I mean, what if they saw, oh, that would have been cool if they saw dolphins though. I swear to God, if they swim with dolphins on season three, I'm going to lose it. So after they're done on their party boat, everyone heads back to the mansion and gets changed into some nice outfits. And Dr. Dill says that he arranged a hibachi dinner for the top three couples with Stormy and Barrett. So they all get to hang out and have a nice little dinner set up outside which I thought was really, really cool. And um, yeah, let's see if we can take a look at the menu together. The menu is so funny. So the side bitch on the top <laughs> are the sides. Himbachi vegetables, Dr. Dill fried rice, toss my salad. And then daddy's meat is down lower. And it says choking the chicken, steak to the heart, tail chaser. I'm like, they got to an actual menu that they could pick from and shit too. Fancy pants. I love hibachi. Uh, I like when they come around and they squirt the booze in your mouth with the super soaker. And no sooner did I say that than they come around with the super soaker from South Florida Hibachi Grill, by the way. Shout out to those guys. Don't know if I've ever eaten there, but I do want to go get hibachi now that I've watched this episode. But they come around with the sake super soaker, right? That's what it's called. That's what's in there, right? Sake? I should know. I've let them do that so many times to me. <laughs> it's like letting strangers squirt me in the face with stuff. Oh. <laughs> This is my first so time writing. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. Mm. All right. Mm. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All good. So I thought it was really funny. <laughs> Anthony's like, "That's my first time," and he was he's taking that shit down. Um, yeah, that looks like a really fun dinner. Um, and we also find out. Oh, this was the gag, right? Sorry again. My handwriting, it looks like a serial killer, if you can see. I'm a, <laughs> excuse me, I'm a lefty. That's my handwriting. I hold my pen weird. Maybe that's what it is. They used to give me this thing in school called a grip, and it was like this triangle that went over to teach you how to hold your pen. I just made matters worse. I hold my pen real tight, too, when I'm writing, and I try to loosen up, but I can Anyways, this isn't a penmanship podcast, or is it gonna be? Coming soon, the penmanship pod. But uh, yeah, so they're all kind of sitting around having a good time and Stormy talks about how in her contract, if there's ever a tie, she's responsible to break it, which I was hoping was going to happen on my season because I think she would have picked me and Nathan. But here's what she said. Here's what Stormy had to say about uh, what happens in the event of a tie. The, our situation. Right. One of the things in my contract, and I squeaked by last year, I got lucky and I didn't have to do it. I almost had to, was if there's ever a situation where there is an absolute tie, mm -hmm. I have to be the tiebreaker. I have to be put in a very uncomfortable position, which you would think I'm used to, but this one's a, a lot less fun. She also has to be the tiebreaker when Barrett and I naked mud wrestle. Wait, there was a tie? 
Yeah. Oh, there was is the house. So, so the there was a tie to make and say, easy one. So I always trust my. Sorry, she's about to explain um, her reasoning behind why um, she picked who she picked in the tiebreaker. This is a little bit longer of a clip than I usually will put on here, but uh, I feel like I have to include it all so you can so everyone can understand what happened. My first gut reaction, but right. then I just take a step back and was like, why was that such a visceral reaction for for me? Mm -hmm. I feel like I know kind of the most about you guys, mostly because I can hear your voice from anywhere in the fucking house. <laughs> oh when Stormy chimed in, it felt really damn good, you know, because this is this is an affront. This is just us being real and just displaying how we feel to everyone. I like what I've seen between you two. Yes. Obviously, I like you guys. <laughs> There were some red flags. I do not like, I have to be completely honest with you, I don't like the way you handled Matt's. I understand it. I don't disagree with the things, the points you were making. It, I feel like you hurt his feelings a little deeper than you should have in that moment. I hope it worked. So she's basically saying that she didn't like the way that Rico handled Matt. And I'm not sure she meant that night or on the questioning, because I watched the questioning again and it doesn't, maybe there's something they didn't show or maybe it was just his like blah attitude towards it or something or something that I just didn't catch. But yeah, uh, she didn't like the way that he de dealt with it. But also it's like, if St Stormy didn't pick you, that means if there's a tie in the end, she ain't going to pick you then either, <laughs> which is, that must've been like, Oh shit. Cause I know if a, Derek and Anthony are already moving along, if Nigel and Rico make it to the end and there was a tie, she wouldn't pick you. But she does say that going forward from this point, it's all odd numbers. So there can't be a tie at the finale. And I think that they might have done it this way purposefully with the top two so that she doesn't have to break a finale tie because last year she almost had to. And a little behind the scenes T, the one person that wasn't at our reunion, I forget his name. He was there for like 20 minutes in the show. He was a real piece of shit. Uh, whatever. Uh, he actually sent a vote in because he wasn't there, but he sent Phoenix with a vote for, for me and Nate, surprisingly. <laughs> So it would have ended up being a tie if they were to even have accepted that. But, you know, he wasn't there. He didn't want to go. If you don't go, you don't get to play. So, you know, uh, no hard feelings for them not accepting the vote. I hope I never see whoever that person was again in my life, though. Everyone else in the cast and crew, fantastic. Uh, then we get over to Jimmy, and he makes a bit of a point because he's starting to feel like, what the hell's going on here? And I wonder in all of this what it is exactly that they weren't seeing. It felt like because we weren't complicated, because we weren't having struggles, because we weren't constantly arguing, it didn't make an impact. Honestly, I don't know. If I was 10 years younger, if I might be a different race, P was a different race, I don't know if the votes would have been exactly the same way they were. It seems like not being the dramatic ones is what got us excluded. And it's really, really frustrating. It made me sad that stability wasn't the, wasn't what we were looking at here. The validation from anybody. And I agree. I, I get exactly what he's saying. He's like, he went on a reality show where it's a competition and the competition is the people who connect the best, right? But none of that matters because... <laughs> People aren't choosing that way. They change the rules throughout this, the cast, not the not the crew. The cast is like, oh, we're going to vote for whoever's the strongest to stay. Unless, of course, we don't like that strong couple and then we're going to kick them off. Oh, we're going to kick off this strong couple. No, never mind. Let's kick off the weak. Like, you know, they change the rules however they felt like just to kick off whoever they wanted, which fine. Do whatever the hell you want. But don't preach one thing and then do another. And I feel like Jimmy and Keith do have a really good connection. And what sucks is I think that it doesn't matter because... It, it's going to come down to the just them some of the himbos just not liking keys um it's weird because they kind of try to pin that whole hazel thing hazel's like oh keys kind of like attacked me and came at me but like so did anthony so did everybody else everyone else is there there was like what are you doing there's no connection with you and kane but i mean keys did kind of bring him aside and was like let me pack your things and help you get going but it just i don't know it, it did seem a little unfair for them and now the himbos returned to ruin their lovely hibachi dinner. And it was kind of funny the way that they all came out. <laughs> uh, here, take a look at their entrance coming back into Dilf Mansion. A 
I swear to God, we didn't tell them to dramatically whip off their sunglasses, which frankly makes it even funnier. It's scary because you don't want. It is funny because they all came out and it's like, I don't know if they just did it because they were like, oh, we're outside now, but why were their glasses on inside? Did they all take them off because they saw Nick take his off? It was really funny. It was cute. But the himbos are back and it's going to be the same thing as the dad. what happened when the daddies came back. They're all going to they're going to get to ask the other two couples because Anthony and Derek already moved on some questions. Then they're all going to vote. And then whoever they vote for moves on to the finale is in the top two. And whoever they don't vote for is eliminated tonight. So Keith kind of is like, they don't like me. So fuck, I'm screwed. And I, I think that they knew exactly what was about to happen as soon as they realized that the himbos were in charge of sending the next couple to the final. There I am. Daniel gets to ask the first question, and uh, here's what he Why says. Why do you feel your relationship is stronger than the other? We have a shared sensibility, which it doesn't require a lot of conflict. It hasn't required a lot of conflict since the beginning. That's how it should be. It shouldn't be about conflict. It shouldn't be that everything is a challenge. That's my opinion. And we have never stared away from each other this whole competition. Never once. We stood by each other's side this whole competition. Never once. Day one. And I get exactly what they're saying here. They're like, we did what you asked me to do here. Why Why is it because I'm not dramatic that I don't get to move on? And then all hell breaks loose because Jimmy's like, I don't believe any of this. I, it's it's such a setup. He, it was kind of like there was no way out. There was no way for them to like squeak by and win this one. And uh, I think he started to feel the pressure of that happening. The uh, question yeah. is, would you ever talk behind one of your friend's backs? No, I'm sorry. I'll jump right to that. No, yeah. So the way that I go about relationships with my partners in life is the same way I go about. So I don't know what he meant about like talking about friends behind your back. Maybe that was a shot at Keese trying to get Hazel out of the house, but everyone was wanted him out because he had no connection. Uh, so I'm not I'm not sure what happened when they got eliminated, what they were talking about. But it, it's like, you know, Jimmy and Keese didn't stand a chance here. They all start like cheering for Nigel and Rico, which is again nuts to me because it's like i feel like none of us are watching the same show but uh jimmy's on the same page as me <laughs> at least at least in this part of the episode he is here's what he says when they all at the same time applauded he's and i just looked at each other like can you fucking believe this shit it was very clear what had been happening it was sad to watch that but it's getting down to the wire so Here's the game. Well, um, I'm gonna just start off by saying, if I gotta talk shit about somebody, then they're not my friend, you know what I mean? Um, if you're my friend, I can keep a G with you to your face, and I'm gonna tell you to your face, whatever is going on is what's going on, and I don't have a problem with that. Bitch, the look that they just shared after he said that, <laughs> the look that they just shared, Hazel looked over at Marcus like, because it's just weird. Everyone else had to see that there was no connection with Hazel and Kane. Everyone was saying the same thing. So why now is it all being taken out on Keys? Um, <laughs> I would have, I would have just been like, all right, I'm, I'm going to finish my, I would have picked up my plate and been like, I'm just going to finish my dinner while I pack because there was no way that they were going to get voted for. And it must be such a shit feeling to know that like you, you can't get, there's no way out of it. Like every time I thought that I was in a situation where I was going to get eliminated or something was going to happen, I was like, how can I get myself out of this? And, and I did, and I made it to the final two. If I don't, that feeling right there of being like, this is it, there is nothing I can do. It like, God, it must've been so gut-wrenching. So after that's all said and done, Jimmy and Keith are just like, what the hell just happened? And Jimmy's like, so over it. Here's what he had to say. That was a fucking setup. Thank sad. you guys for coming tonight. You all look incredibly sexy. Yes. I'm going to take these gentlemen. Yeah, he was so over it. <laughs> he was not having it, any any part of that. And it just really sucks because what can you do? There's, <laughs> you, they're voting you out. There's nothing you can do at that point. And so they all sit around and deliberate um, the himbos. And they get to pick uh, whoever's going to be in the finals. But as that's happening... Um, and as they're picking based on, not on the stronger couple, but just on disliking somebody, which is, is shitty, but it's the way the cookie crumbles. I think I was the strongest couple on my season. <laughs> I feel like I should have got picked, but I didn't just because people were a little bitter. But, um, yeah, here's what Jimmy ended up saying. Uh, it was... 
kind of hard to watch here. The wire now. This is fucking bullshit. All Can't of them at shit. the same time fucking clapping. You're gonna. You're... That was a sincere, honest deliberation. Or shit. We have been there since day fucking one. We haven't fought. We haven't argued. We have been unified since the beginning. We we absolutely are crazy about each other. We absolutely enjoy spending time with one another. It is totally natural. Uh, they just finished all writing down. I don't even know what you're fucking fucking out there. It's bullshit. Bitch, Jimmy had it officially done. Uh, I would have been same, honestly. Same. I would have been like, what's happening right now? What what weird rule is this now? And it's just such a twist from season one to have them come back and do that. So it's like, are they going to, they're going to have to vote again at the elimination, right? So it's, it's, that's weird, right? So they're each going to, they each voted for the couple they wanted in the final. And now they're each voting the elimination, but... Oh, I guess since they weren't all unanimous, one was a tiebreaker. But it's like, do you already have a vote that you're going to have again? I don't know. It just seemed seemed tricky that they get to that they had so much power twice. They eliminated um, cast members. Uh, but anyways, so the himbos finished their deliberation outside. And I wonder if they got to eat any of the hibachi leftovers. I would have stolen the sake super soaker. And then we get to find out who is the final couple that's going to move on to the finale. And... Um, who unfortunately has to go home. All right, so now's the time when we get to find out who the final couple moving on is. Other couple safe from tonight's elimination. His Nigel Enrico. Obviously, like clearly I would have been I would have shot out of my seat like a rocket if it was the other way around. I like when shit like that happens on reality TV. When it's not who you think it's going to be. This was like... And it's it's like obviously no fault of like production and stuff. When you're watching a reality show like this and it's like, it's like painfully clear that someone's just going to glide their way to the end and no one's going to do anything about it. It's not as fun. It's fun when, when there's like a shakeup or someone leaves somebody or someone like, you know... Like, even when Nigel and Rico got separated and, and Rico had to go on his date with Matt, it, it, it was because Matt just had, like, picked him and whatever. It, it, you know, he wouldn't have done it otherwise. But, like, at least when Nate left me, he picked on his own accord and fucking blew my mind. That was fun to watch for everyone but me. But it just was like, you know, it seemed, it seemed like this, we knew this was going to happen the, the whole time anyways. So unfortunately, Jimmy and Keith get eliminated, which sucks because I really enjoy Jimmy's one-liners. But I mean, he still gets to be, he was on every episode and he's back next week for the reunion. And I'm sure I'll have a lot to say at the reunion too, which I can't wait. I want to hear what the drama is going to be at that reunion. So the next episode is the final one. It is episode 10. We're going to have the reunion. I'm assuming it's, they're all going to vote for which of the two couples they want to win. And then we'll find out who takes away the $10,000 cash prize on season two of For the Love of Dilfs. Um, I know this is like a, bit, a little bit of a shorter episode than it usually is, but it was a lot of like fillery stuff. And also, I'm not going to show you the whole episode of the show because that's why you have to subscribe to OutTV. It is super duper cheap. There's a ton of great shows on there. You got to support them if you want to see the show keep getting made too. And... I just want to say thanks so much, everyone, for listening. Please make sure that you share this podcast. Listen on Spotify. It's up all night with a K uh, right here on YouTube if you're watching the video. Um, if you just give the video a like or a comment, you can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. It's free. Same goes on uh, Spotify. And uh, just share it. Throw it in your story. Be like, hey, check out this idiot talking a bunch. It means a lot. And after the finale next week, I have a bunch of special guests coming on. Um, I have Topher, one of the producers... Uh, the, actually, the co-founder of Daddy TV and the producer of um, For the Love of Dilf's creator. He's going to be on the show. I'm going to try to get some tea out of him on season three. Maybe a little more behind the scenes stuff. So thanks so much for watching. And make sure you like and subscribe and share and comment. Thanks. Good night. Goodbye.